public interest. I am Malika Ramsey and Mr. David Granger, the Leader of the Opposition, is back with us this week. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Malika. On today's program, we will be discussing what would have happened throughout 2012 in the National Assembly as it relates to the what many call the New Dispensation. Now, Mr. Granger, let's just jump right into it. Recently, a partnership, yourself and a partnership for national unity would have uh, sent out a release and you spoke to the media about it, of course, um, and they, if, if I may quote from their release, a partnership for national unity has forced the PPPC administration to behave responsibly. Now, your critics would say they definitely disagree with that, that statement, that, that heading, because APNU is saying that they've somehow managed to get the PPPC government to behave responsibly, but we still see um, things being challenged. Every decision made is being challenged. For example, you have the Attorney General keeps going to the High Court. How would you say to the critics that, look, we have managed to get them to act responsibly? Well, this is precisely um, what we've been saying, is that because we have been behaving in a certain way, the Attorney General and the People's Progressive Party as a whole have been opposed to our strategy for bringing about better governance in Guyana. Uh, in, for, in the instance that you mentioned, the Attorney General has taken me to the courts on four occasions. But on each occasion, I would like to emphasize that we have stated clearly that we are asserting two principles. One is the principle of uh, the authority of the National Assembly. And second is the principle of the accountability of ministers uh, to the National Assembly. So the fact that the Attorney General has taken me to court four times for 2012 indicates that uh, we are asserting the, 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 the two principles and he is challenging that assertion. Now the PPP has been in government for 20 years and they have had things their own way. They have had a National Assembly in which their decisions could not be challenged simply because they didn't have the the, the vote, they didn't have the, the majority vote. But now the tables have turned. So the challenges themselves are proof of the democratic transition that has taken place, that was caused by the November 2011 general and regional elections. But how does that trickle down, if, if I may call them the, the, the small man, the, the man with the bread and butter issue, sending your children to school, how, how do they benefit from that? They benefit because by asserting the authority of the National Assembly, we can now ensure that any measures brought to the floor of the House by the People's Progressive Party will be subject to greater scrutiny. And if the PPP doesn't conform to um, proper uh, managerial or governmental procedures, we wouldn't pass those measures. So the small man will benefit because he is now assured that the PPP the executive branch will be forced to be more transparent, more accountable. So what we're doing in the courts is going to trickle down by giving the ordinary person a higher quality of governance because once we act in the way that we are acting now, we will be able to ensure that the money is not spent in a, in a, a profligate manner and that what the government pays to contractors or pays for services will be properly accounted for in the National Assembly. So there's going to be a better uh, standard of governance as a result of what we've been doing. Okay, I am happy that you mentioned, um, you, you talked about monies and monies being spent and, and, and being paid. Now, one of the major things that would have happened in 2012 is the fact that NCN budget was cut. I know one of the journalists also recently brought it up and it's a question that you know, plaguing our minds. We saw the budget for NCN being cut. Um, persons are being hired at NCN and the question is, how is a partnership for national unity going to ensure that they play by the rules? Well, this is the task of the parliamentarian. When we go into parliament, we ask questions, we introduce motions to make ministers more accountable. And in the case of the, the NCN, the communication network. If we have voted to reduce the um, allocation to that uh, agency 
to one dollar and money is still being provided, we will now ask the question, where is the money coming from? And mm -hmm. if it is found that any minister of the government is acting in defiance of a decision of the National Assembly, well then that minister himself will be responsible um, to the National Assembly to explain his behavior and he could be punished by the National Assembly. Sanction could be brought against him in the National Assembly. So it is in this way that we will ensure a higher standard of governance in Guyana. And in the case of NCN in particular, this matter will be raised again. If we have voted no money uh, and money is being provided from the government, well, somebody will have to answer those questions. If the money is being provided by their own commercial operations, because it's a state corporation, again, they will be more comfortable. Let me say this, that during the course of this year, there has been a virtual flood of reports from different government agencies coming in at a rate that they never came in before because they now have to account to the National Assembly. So I think things are improving and the way we behaved in the National Assembly during 2012 has been responsible for this greater transparency and it will affect the National Communication Network, it will affect GINA, it will affect the Chronicle and all the state-owned corporations. Let's stay on the media for a bit. I mean, aside from Jean and NCN and even Chronicle, we see letter writers. Um, some of us, we call them phantom letter writers. Um, they're, they're everywhere. They're in the newspapers. They're on the internet. Now, it's more or less against the opposition, against APNU and, and um, the a AFC. How will a partnership national unity de possibly deal with that in 2013? Because these, these reports and these phantom writers are against the opposition and they're putting, giving the, the, the public their um, perception, their opinion on what is happening. How will APNU fight that? Well, it is impossible for APNU or any government to control the internet, to control um, what takes place you know, in, in what I call the blogosphere. But as far as the state media are concerned, um, we are going to continue to demand greater accountability and we will use our financial clout and we can also use other measures because there are several parliamentary committees and the persons in charge of these enterprises could be brought before the parliamentary committees to answer questions. We have to understand now, for the first time in the last 20 years, for the first time, Parliament, as long as it acts within the Constitution, is supreme. The executive branch is not equal to the legislative branch. It's the legislative branch that makes the rules, makes the laws, and it is the judiciary that um, interprets the laws, and it's the executive that enforces those laws. So the lawmaking body, the legislative branch, that is the National Assembly, is a superior branch. And that is what we intend to do this year. We will ensure that um, the executive and the, legis the executive branch um, enforces our laws. The PPP has accused APNU and the opposition, and I mean, if I can stretch it a bit to say rightfully, they are saying that the opposition is taking advantage um, because of the one-seat majority. I mean, um, in the in the past, before the 2011 uh, elections, we heard sentiments from the PPP like okay, you will have your say and we will have our way. Now that is being turned on the opposition. Your thoughts, sir? Well, the PPP is in a corner and I think they are, you know, they have their backs against the wall. So I'm not worried about the actual behavior right now. What I'm worried about is the degree to which we can deliver good governance to the general population. Mm -hmm. um, we are not afraid. We are behaving on a, on, a, on a principled way, in a principled way, and we intend to use the majority. If it's one vote, if it's ten votes, it doesn't matter. What happened? What matters is that in the elections last year, 175,000 persons are recorded as having voted for APNU and AFC together, and 166,000 people for the PPP. We are in the major majority. And it is not illegal, it is not illegitimate, um, it is not unethical. We are behaving in a perfectly constitutional manner to make sure that the decisions that are made in terms of the passage of monies, the passage of laws, are in accordance with the needs of the general public. So the PPP bleating about um, 
about one seat majority um, is not something that disturbs the opposition. We are concerned with a better management of this country and that's what we're going to do now. What we intend to do through the media is ensure that our voice is heard. For example, during the budget debate, uh, although we, d we debated for nearly a month, almost every speaker on the opposition side rose to, to explain our position, we weren't reported by the NCN, we weren't reported by GINA, we weren't reported by Chronicle. The only time you find an opposition member featuring in those um, uh, media is when he was being criticized by a PPP member. Um, so that has been uh, an abuse of the media and a, even the speaker had to make reference to that from the chair. So I think that the PPP has been concerned with portraying a certain image to the general public and it has distorted the work of the opposition, has distorted the work of the National Assembly um, in the public view. But I'm not concerned necessarily that you know they have been doing that because I believe that in 2013 we're going to see better. We're going to see the NCN, we're going to see GINA, we're going to see the GNNL, which publishes the Chronicle, brought on the strictest scrutiny by the National Assembly. In saying that, do you believe that uh, the results of the work of the National Assembly throughout 2012 will somehow force Mr. Ramatar to manage his government a bit different? Um, that is a good question. Um, we would have liked to see more consultation. We would like to see more cooperation. It has not happened, particularly in the public, in management of public finance, in the formation of a tripartite budget committee. These have not happened. And I cannot say what's in Mr. Ramatara's mind, but what is sure is that he cannot go on like that. You know, he has to sit down and speak with the majority. Because we are not a phantom, we are not a ghost. We are real people who have the interests of the masses at heart. And we need to ensure that um, the PPP um, stops being abusive and stops being so critical, stops being so nitpicking, stops bickering and sits down with the opposition to determine how this country is to be managed. That has not happened yet. We're looking to Mr. Ramatar for leadership during 2013 to ensure that the people of the country could be more satisfied with the way the country is governed. We would like to know that the 10th parliament, which has brought about such significant change, is also a parliament that has brought about more development. But it hasn't happened yet because the PPP has got a mindset that um, they don't need to come to us. And that is what has caused the problems with, um, with, with finance, the financial papers, the budget, that there's a mindset that they don't have to explain. Well, they have to explain. For example, quite recently, we took a stand on the funding of the Marriott Hotel, and the senior members of the administration have said oh, they will not conform. Well, we will ensure that they conform by bringing those persons, by bringing those matters to the floor of the House. That is where government of Guyana will um, be made to answer questions on the National Assembly. Um, not in the press, not in GINA, but in the National Assembly. So we look to Mr. Ramatar for leadership. We look to the officials of the PPP administration to be more responsive to the needs of the people. Okay, in looking to Mr. Ramatar for leadership, possibly better leadership, it has been said throughout 2012, and of course that would have been soon after the 2011 general elections, that uh, Mr. Ramatar is somehow being influenced by older members of the PPP. Um, namely, um, focus was placed on the former president, Mr. Bar Jagdio, that he's possibly still pulling the strings and, and, and running things. Um, is that... It, I should say, are you or is a Partnership for National Unity concerned that that's what may be happening? I'm not privy to the internal workings of the People's Progressive Party and certainly Mr. Ramatar, at his age, he's older than Mr. Bar Jagdeo, he's one of the oldest serving members in the cabinet um, and I don't think that he should be afraid of making decisions on his own. He's got a cabinet, they give him advice, he's got a lot of other advisors, Ms. Gail Tashir is an advisor, for example, Mr. Navin Chandapal is an advisor. 
and um, he should be his own man. He should make decisions in the interests of the public, as he perceives um, the, the, the public interest. So I, I've heard stories about Mr. Jack Dill's influence. I don't know how true they are. But what I would say is that Mr. Ramater and his cabinet coming face to face with a situation, for example, poverty, you cannot go through Guyana without seeing thousands upon thousands of poor people. Education, you must know that there are thousands and thousands of dropouts from the schools. Employment, you know, people are without jobs, young people coming out of school are without jobs. These are the matters that Mr. Ramatar must, must consider, not whether there's Mr. Jagdew behind him whispering things, but he must look at the situation, what the people of Guyana need, and make decisions in accordance with, the, with his judgments on, 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 uh, on those situations. And that is what should drive him forward, the needs of the people. And we, because we speak for the majority of the people, have to be consulted. Not Mr. Jagdew, he is history. Okay. Again, the opposition criticizes, I mean, just as the PPP would criticize the opposition, the opposition criticizes government and, and Mr. Ramatar for not necessarily doing enough. There is talk in the air, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that that came from APNU officially or the PPP officially, but there is talk in the air that we may have a snap elections in 2013. Again, if a partnership for national unity should win the elections and go into govern, government, it's a case where David Grange and APN, you would be inheriting these problems and people would probably criticize you for the same things because we know change can't happen overnight. In the event that there's a snap election, how ready is APNU to take Guyana forward in a different direction from which the PPP has been taking the country? Well, there are two factors here. Number one is that the public is, um, is the entity the body that determines the outcome of elections. And we are confident that over the last 12 months, the PPP has made so many errors. They have left the condition of the masses unchanged, um, that the public support has shifted measurably towards APNU, towards the opposition side. So in terms of public opinion, I think the PPP has been the loser in 2012. In the second instance, I think people want to get ahead with development. I don't think people want another election. Although we are prepared, you know, nobody can say they ever have um, enough money. But what determines the outcome of the election more than money is the momentum of the people, the, the behavior of the masses, and their desire for change. I do not think there is anything in the PPP's record for 2012 which will endear them to the masses and which will ensure a victory for the PPP. Even Dr. Luncheon, um, a few weeks ago, um, said that um, another election will not change the, the, the situation in the National Assembly. I think they realize that forever they've lost the majority in Guyana. Uh, Mr. Ram Karan gave us a, a three-page analysis. Uh, much of the analysis was based on what they call ethnic arithmetic. But if the PPP is depending on ethnicity, well, they're wrong because the people on the ground are looking at issues. Increasingly, they're looking at issues. Young people don't want to vote for an Indian. They want to vote for somebody who's going to give them jobs. Um, you know, people who are poor don't want to vote for an Indian or an African. They want to vote for somebody who's going to relieve their poverty. Uh, children going to school, you know, teachers don't want to vote for an Indian um, government or an African government or an Armenian government, they want to vote for a government that is going to solve the education problems. And in every count, APNU has been able to put forward a manifesto, put forward a platform which will solve the nation's problem, much more than the PPP has been capable of doing. But do you believe that the PPP can endure four more years of hmm. not having control in the National Assembly? I do believe that if uh, the president wants to, he can sit down and speak with the opposition, APNU and AFC. The process started on the 1st of December last year, um, but I am not convinced, as you can see from the, the agreement which they signed with the Upper Demerara Bobis region on the 21st of August, they don't seem to be inclined to meet their obligations under those agreements. 
The same thing happened with the tripartite process. We started to speak, but the government is not interested in bringing serious matters onto the table. We want to ensure that there is measurable progress towards poverty alleviation, towards providing jobs, towards dealing with the education situation. And it's no way just meeting and talking. It's not a, a tea party. It's not a social club. We want to develop Guyana, and the PPP just wants to hold on to power. Okay. We're talking two different languages. Right. Let's talk about protests in uh, 2012. We saw several of those, of course, beginning in January 2012 with um, hinterland education, hinterland uh, uh, schools. But the two major protests for uh, 2012 would have been that of Linden, and then you had the agricola situation. Now, at some point or the other, the opposition, the, the blame for those protest actions were placed squarely at the feet of the opposition. I mean, and yes, we've heard statements from APNU and Alliance for Change that, look, we had nothing to do with it, we were not responsible. People were placed under pressure, and as a result, um, that's what happened. Now, is a partnership for national unity willing to take any responsibility at all for any of those protest actions? Well, in the first instance at Linden, we know very well that the protests erupted spontaneously after Finance Minister Dr. Ashton Singh presented his budget in March. Within days, maybe four days after that, the women of Linden took to the streets. This is without the involvement of APNU or any other political organization. They came to the conclusion themselves that given the history of electricity rates in Linden, they could not afford uh, to pay those new rates. So that was spontaneous. And it went on all through April, all through May, all through June, and it was only in July that matters came to a head when the Lindeners themselves decided that they would take protest action, and again they approached the police, permission was granted, but it was the response of the PPP administration, particularly the Ministry of Home Affairs, which led to the catastrophe that occurred on the 18th of July. We had nothing to do, APNU had nothing to do with criminal violence. What happened was provocative action on the part of the Guyana Police Force, and that is why we called for a removal of the minister, and that is why we called for a commission of inquiry. So, as far as the Linden issue is concerned, right through, right up to August, it was the police which was behaving in a provocative and aggressive manner. As far as uh, Agricola is concerned, again, that's another tragedy. On the day of the killing, um, uh, the Shadow Minister of Public Security, Mr. Vincent Felix, and I went up to the to Agricola village. Uh, the blood was still fresh on the on the ground. Well, the boys were sitting on on some cardboard under a shed, and it is quite clear that the police acted irresponsibly in shooting not only Shaquille Grant but also the other boys who were injured. Uh, again. APNU did not provoke any protest action. The people of Agricola themselves were fed up with the police behavior in that community over a period of years. There's a history. There were people known to the public who were attempting to sell drugs in Agricola. And that led to murders, that led to a massacre in Agricola during the Troubles. So you cannot understand what took place in September without understanding that this came at the end of a long period of police harassment which occurred since 2000, this thing in 2002. This had been going on for about 10 years. So people were already angry and the killing of Shaquille Grant was really the tipping point. Mm -hmm. um, what made matters worse is that when the policeman who was alleged to have shot Shaquille Grant was taken to court, uh, the the villagers felt he was being treated uh, with great favor, um, he was being treated differently to any other person accused of murder, and they got angry. And the head of the presidential secretary, Dr. Roger Luncheon, made some comments about um, getting ready to rumble, and I think people just flew off the handle there. But it was nothing to do with APNU. In fact, we, in that very week, we launched a peaceful series of protests. 
and it, they were well organized. We had our slogans. It culminated in the GYSM having a rally at the Stabber, um Square on the Friday night. That occurrence took place, I think it was on a Thursday. We had our speakers going to various regions um, to address the issue of police killings. They had speakers briefs. Our picketers were well uh, behaved. They, they were well organized, they were orderly. There was not a single incident throughout that week in which the APNU could have been criticized for any act of disorder. It was orderly, it was well um, conducted. I myself was involved in the protests outside of the, the temporary office of the Minister of Home Affairs and outside of the office of the President. And I am satisfied that APNU behaved in a principled and orderly manner. We did not foment violence at Linden, we did not foment violence at the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So the critics are wrong, and if they look carefully, they will see that APNU behavior was always above board, beyond reproach. Let's talk gagging uh, Minister of Home Affairs, Clement Rohi. Now, you have managed to do that, to, in a sense, silence him in the National Assembly. But the big question is, he is still the Minister of Home Affairs. What next will APN, you do. Um, what what purpose is gagging Home Affairs Minister Clement Rohe serving? Well, it is a very important measure, a novel measure for the National Assembly. We are quite aware that we cannot um, remove uh, Clement Rohe from the National Assembly because he was elected. He's an elected member. Uh, the opposition didn't elect him, and we cannot remove him. Secondly, he is an appointed minister of the government. The president appointed him, and only the president could uh, revoke that appointment. What we did say, however, is that we do not have confidence in his ability to perform the functions of Minister of Home Affairs. And we are not going to allow him to speak on matters concerning the Ministry of Home Affairs, because we do not have confidence in his ability to do so. So he can remain in the parliament. He could remain as minister, but he's not going to present any matters to the National Assembly concerning home affairs. If he wants, he can speak about tourism, but he's not going to be speaking about home affairs. When questions about home affairs and security come up, uh, will you accept responses, especially as it relates to the budget, uh, the 2013 budget is coming soon, will you accept responses on home affairs and security even though he's still the home affairs minister but can't respond will you accept responses from other mps ppp mps that is or other um ppp ministers oh we will accept responses from other ppp ministers our problem is not with other ppp ministers um our question is that our problem is that we have established a principle of accountability and Mr. Rohi is accountable to the National Assembly. Now, let us, let us not go too far away from the, from the main point. Um, Mr. Rohi is not being criticized for one incident. He has been Minister of Home Affairs for six years. And when you look at what is happening to our fishermen, they're attacked by pirates. When you look at what is happening to our miners, they're attacked by bandits. When you look at what is happening on the streets, the horrendous traffic accidents, when you look at what is happening in terms of domestic violence, when you look at what is happening in terms of narco-trafficking, people trafficking, gun running, these are the matters which we considered and discussed at the time of uh, passing the vote of no confidence in Mr. Rohi. So it's not about one incident. So he's not going to speak to the National Assembly about uh, uh, public security again, because we don't have confidence on the evidence of his performance over the last six years. It's not a single incident. Okay. In the final moments of this program, David Granger, a partnership for national unity, the National Assembly 2013. Where should we be? What is expected? What different can we see in 2013? Well, I would like to end the program by wishing all of our viewers a happy new year. And that is our intention, to ensure that the people of Guyana have a happy new year. We will ensure that in the National Assembly, the executive branch remains accountable. We will ensure that our own shadow ministers in APNU and the people in our, on our side of the house in the National Assembly continue to bring forward motions and bills and resolutions con you know, which will bring about a, a higher standard of governance. 
we will ensure that our deliberations, the reports of our meetings, are reported in um, in a, a reasonable manner without the type of abusive language that we've seen from the PPP side. And we'll ensure that the people of Ghana have a happy 2013. The tide has turned against the PPP in 2012, and I think the entire public, the entire country can look forward to a happy 2013 on the, the APN news. Fresh, um, forthright behavior, the way we are keeping pressure to, on the PPP in the National Assembly. That is where the government will be called to book will be made to answer and will be made to perform at a higher standard in the National Assembly. So they can look forward to a happy new year. Opposition Leader Brigadier the Honorable David Granger. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. This has been another edition of the Public Interest. I am Malai Karamzi. Do join us again next time. Bye, Guyana. <laughs>